preaching of Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith also is vain? Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. Verse 17 says, And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. Philippians chapter number 3, verse number 10. Paul says, you know, you can say this with me, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection being made conformable unto his death. Let's bow our heads here. Dear Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come before you once again this beautiful Sunday afternoon, realizing this is the day that you have made, and we are rejoicing, we are glad in it. We kind of the privilege to be able to assemble ourselves together this afternoon because if it had not been for your mercies and for your grace, Lord, if it had not been for the ability that you gave us to be able to walk into this place and to hear this word, God, we would not have the opportunity to be able to have more faith. I pray that this word that is preached this afternoon would put the heart of every soul in this congregation. I pray, Lord, everyone that hears this word might be able to believe and God grow in you. I pray you would do a work, hallelujah, give grace, God, in our minds. That it motivate us, Lord, to a higher level of responsibility, God. To be that living witness, God, that city set upon a hill that cannot be healed. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would bind uh, every evil spirit that would come to bind this word. We come against every enemy that would come to take this seed out of the hearts of your people. Now protect this word in our minds. Help us to remember it. Help us not to be forgetful here of the word, but a doer of the word. Let this word prosper so much in our hearts that we will go forth into the kingdom. Lord, as a catalyst to change individuals through the power of your anointing, I pray that someone today that's backslidden will come to themselves and return back to you, God. Help them to remember your goodness. Lead them to a place of repentance. Lead them to a place of change. Remember those that are hearing this word that have not been baptized in Jesus' name. Help them to know, God, that through faith in your name and obedience to your word, we believe, Lord, that we shall take away their sins. You said, God, that he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Help them to know, Lord, that there is a blood covering, God, in water baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus. Help them to know that you are the same God that will fill individuals with biblical evidence of the power of the Holy Ghost. We thank you this afternoon that you're still pouring out your spirit as the prophet Joel said upon all flesh. We thank you, Lord, that there still is Pentecostal power, God, in the Holy Ghost, God. There was a sound that came from heaven on that day of Pentecost. It was a sound today, God. We pray right now, Lord, that this word will go forward in a powerful way. And God, will not fail to give your name all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. We ask it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. May be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give the Lord some praise in here this afternoon. Hallelujah. Amen. We'll do a little bit on that. Let's give the Lord some praise. As you look back in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, I'd like for you to look at verse number 17. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. 
For topic this afternoon, I want to talk to your heart. Say this with me. After, after. say it again, after, after. Your, your resurrection. resurrection. Make it personal. I'll say after, after. My, my resurrection. And praise God for a subtopic. Say with me, it's all different now. Come on, say it's all, it's all different now. I want to talk to your hearts today because I think about the scripture also in Corinthians, we didn't read it, but in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, uh, Paul lets us know here, therefore, if any man be, notice the preposition, in Christ, he is a new creature. She also. A new creation. Amen. Goes on lets us know that all things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Let me tell you something. God didn't stop creating in the book of Genesis. God is still creating today. Thank God that the Lord tells us in his word that we are to be a new wine skin. See, there's never really, really anything old in God. God is always progressive and moving forward. Today I want to talk about your new resurrected life. I want to talk this afternoon here as we look at the perfect man, Christ Jesus, for what he went through. I want to underscore the importance here that a new life is not an old life. And that a new, your new life cannot look like your old life. I want to bring a separation here between the things you used to do and the things that you're doing now. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Today I want us to go back in, in, in a world that's so busy and in a world that's so bogged down with the cares of life. We really fail to think about what Jesus went through. Sometimes we look over Calvary, we look over the cross, and we say, well, I think sometimes we get somewhat, if we're not careful, a selfish spirit in our hearts, and we think, well, you know, when God planted us down here, he should have did something about it. Amen. See, some people look at God in the wrong perspective, and I hope that's not the way you are this afternoon. Understand here, God gave man a free will, placed him in the garden, and gave him a choice. He said, you can choose to serve me and you'll have life and peace. Or the day that you eat of the forbidden fruit, he said, you shall what? Surely die. Notice the physical death did not start. In, in other words, you couldn't see uh, the process of dying taking place. And it was not a 24-hour day. But when Adam and Dan, when they were, um, you know, I told the Sunday school class this morning, Eve was deceived. But Adam walked right into it. Amen. Which is sad here. You know, when you think about it, Adam knew what he uh, should have been doing. And then he tried to do the blame game. Well, Lord, is like this. Obviously, it's the woman who gave me. As if she was defective. Amen. As if Eve needed to be recalled like Jim would recall parts. Uh, Adam said, I, I wouldn't have sinned, but God, apparently, the woman you gave me. She gave me of the fruit, and I did eat of it. And after all, I'm just a man. Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? Adam was simple, but Adam was not stupid. Adam knew what he was doing. And then somebody, let me tell you something here. I'm going to talk this afternoon here, and again, I'm going to lay the groundwork, because when you look at Jesus, what he knew here, I think it's so powerful and supernatural because when you look at the resurrected life in Christ Jesus, you're looking at what Jesus went through. Now, let's not look right now at your cross experiences, but let's just take a few minutes, all right, and let's look at the man Christ Jesus. You know he was God in flesh, but he was also every bit man. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus went through individuals talking about him. Jesus went about, praise God, the negativity, amen, coming out of individuals. Get this here. Now notice, the Bible said everything. <laughs> now, it, it, it's a mystery. How in the world could Christ make everything when he wasn't that old? 
but obviously in his pre-incarnated stage, amen, or existence, he existed as the Word. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, right? So, but get this, the main Christ Jesus had to look at the creation of God, amen, and had to miss the lies that were being told. In other words, uh, they said, Christ we see you, we hear you, but in other words, we really don't see you, and we really don't hear you. We look at Jesus being an ordinary prophet, an ordinary man, there's really nothing special about you, Son of God. Jesus had to look at the negativity uh, and listen to that. He had to deal with the pains of humiliation. He had to be able to deal with, amen, uh, this moral decaying of man. And uh, remember here, as we said earlier this afternoon, we the morning in our Sunday school class, it hurt God that man uh, was disobedient disobedient to him, made man, but there was a prophetic word way back in Genesis that the seed of the woman, get this, would bruise the serpent's head. Upon the seed, we find here uh, that seed, the man of God, the son of God, sees ridicule. Jesus is placed in the midst of debate. Jesus is placed in the midst of lying. And there's something about here, they're not lying about anybody else, they're lying about him. They are bringing a spirit of derision made on him. In other words, they're making fun of him and they're mocking him. You know, believers, or unbelievers rather, are very, and ignorance is not bliss, ignorance is very painful. Understand here that as a man, uh, here God was hurt. This new hell God actually remember God is not just a force, but God is the supreme being. God also has emotions. The same sticks and stones may hurt my bones, but names never hurt me. That's a lie. Names do hurt you. Amen. Some of you can call some names and you still remember those names that you were told from the time you were a young child. Maybe it was impressed upon you that you were dumb or you were stupid or that you were ignorant. If it would have came from anybody else other than family, probably you probably could have shrugged it off. But the fact that it came from someone that you respected, somebody that you loved, somebody that you believed in. Amen. Get this here. Jesus comes to his own. And this is the worst type of pain. When you come to your own, you expect your own to believe in you. You expect your own to be in your corner. Amen, somebody. But when the humiliation comes from your own, it hurts more than anything. Jesus told us here that uh, your foes are going to be they of your own household. So again, I want to go back here as, as we look, again, looking this time here, the leaders all around him. He had the deal of being falsely a man as being a troublemaker. The world today, they would love to be Christians. They don't even talk about holiness. They don't even talk about sanctification. Uh, in the mind of unbelievers, that's so far and outdated. Uh, in many individuals' minds, that has nothing to do with what's taking place in 2014. Being sanctified and set apart, no, that's, that's not it for today. Amen? Amen. Worldliness and this modernism of the culture, amen, comes up against the word of God. Jesus also had to face haters. He had to face, amen, abusiveness. Amen. He had to be able to deal and take the blunt and get this of all the world's sins upon his shoulder. You think you got problems? Upon the land that God was placed, all the sins of the world. Sin, you know, we can't even comprehend how, in the mind of God, how, how, how God feels about this other that it, it, it's such a, um, you know, yeah, I can't put it into words as, as far as God's spirit. It's so contrast to God. Because God is absolutely holy. Yes. And it's in our minds to think that God loved us so much, 
he gave us his only begotten son. Now get this, Jesus did no sin. He never practiced sin. See, sinners practice sin. They get up in the morning and they defile their bodies. They get up in the morning and they abuse others. But Jesus here, who did no sin, who practiced no sin, get this, was made sin for you and I. Imagine the mind that he must have had. He, he had to know who he was in his identity. So therefore here, God made him sin for us, and on his own shoulders as the Lamb of God, he bears in his body all of our iniquity, all of our shame. Think about this. Have you ever had to suffer for something? That's the worst type of suffering, isn't it? Now, if you curse somebody out and they smack you in the face, well, you got it coming toward you. I'm going to keep your mouth shut. You're going to get smacked. Okay? That's all that comes out of your mouth. The worst type of suffering is suffering for something you didn't do. Jesus could ask questions, Lord, why do I have to take on me? But he knew why he came into the world was to suffer, to die, and to rise again. But before we can talk about, get this, the, the celebration of resurrection, we've got to look the, uh, at the ugly part, amen, of death. You cannot have a resurrection unless you have a death. You cannot celebrate it until you understand where you're coming from. When I talk about resurrection here, you know, resurrection is something that you need to celebrate every day, not just at Easter time. Hello, somebody. Everybody say, after resurrection. When we look here at the text here, the Bible lets us know, uh, not in Corinthians, but you know, we also know in John, St. John, that in him was life, and the life was the light of men. We understand here that there was something about Jesus who was unlike any other creature that was made. He was divine, but yet he was he God man. When we look at Jesus, we have to also understand that he is God's love in action. How would love walk? How would love talk? How would love react in the midst of adverse situations? You have to look at Jesus. Amen. He's a perfect God man. But what I really believe is so powerful, and I want you to get this here, is that after all that he went through, all right, Jesus gets up out of the ground, and you don't find anywhere in the text of the word of God that there is resentment in his words. You don't find anywhere after his resurrection that he goes on the attack. Did you ever think about that? If they would have nailed you and I to the cross, I know what we would have thought. I'm coming against all y'all that laughed at me while I was hanging up there. Oh yeah, it's three days later, and it's going to be the day of reckoning. Now there's coming a day of vengeance, but this was not the day. This was not the time. After the resurrection, I want you to understand here about God's anointing and power in the man Christ Jesus. In the material world, we don't want really to use too much, but let's look at the personalities after his resurrection. No resentment, no attack, no revenge. Bishop would tell us, you know, people that are not spiritually sound, you know, when you poison my dog, you know, I'm going to skin your cat, you know. Hey. It's in the nature, like, hey, you come after me, I'm coming after you. See, you saw in the movie, Diary of a Mad Black Woman. You look at these situations so much after a while, you're going to get yours, right? Hello, somebody. See, I, I feel sorry when some people go into abusive situations because some people actually do snap. There's no snap in Jesus at this time. There's no snap after his resurrection. And you talk about living in the anointing. 
we talk about being the Christos, the anointing of God. Get this here now. He has he, he has glorified flesh, which I don't know the chemical makeup of that. We know that he was able to appear uh, in the room when all the doors and windows were shut. The disciples were in there and they were afraid, and Jesus just appears, walks through the wall. And he said, Well, then I know you hate me right now because you seen me die on the cross a few, just a few hours ago, and now here I am standing in front of you. He appears, until not after his, his resurrection, he appears to his believers, amen? And I believe it wasn't just his believers, I believe there had to be some people that he appeared to that said, Ain't nothing to that man, Jesus. And now he's walking around after resurrection in front of them. Now he's appearing to his believers who are afraid and that these grown men are cowering in a room. He says, touch me and handle me. I know you think I'm a ghost, but a spirit hath not flesh and bone. And so blood, flesh and bone that you see I have. Now remember, his blood had to be offered up as a high priest and man to God. So somehow, one thing in the body is flesh and bone not like we have here, but it had to be glorified, flesh and bone. But let's look at the personality and the spirit of Jesus. No resentment, no attack. It had to take here the anointing and the love shining out from him to his enemies. Thank you, Jesus. After the evil talk, after the debate, after the haters, after skepticism, mm, we find here that his resurrected life proved that God was not only with him, God was in him. I said after his resurrection. The Bible says great is the mystery of godliness. God was justified. In the spirit. See, see, the, the one thing we want more than anything, we want, I, I told you so, I'm not like that. And let me tell you something, I'm, I'm going to get to you right now, I'm just talking about Jesus, amen? Uh, amen, can I get a little bit more on this mic here? After he rose, with all power, thank you Jesus, the greatest I told you so, that I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life, was the fact that Jesus was walking around the same individuals that said, ain't nothing to you. You're just a prophet. You're just a teacher. You are a man making himself the son of God. See, they, they understood exactly what his language was. Because if you're saying you're the son of God, you're saying you're one with God. And obviously here, as a father, how many fathers do we have in here? How many fathers in here have sons? Amen? Now look here. As a father, and some of you don't have uh, sons, some of you have daughters, you know? I know Deacon's got three daughters, you know? Look here. No matter as a father, if anybody came after your children, you'd be ready to tear them up. Amen? Yeah? And, and when it comes even to that animalistic nature, you don't come between a mother and her cubs. Hello? In nature, even when they're uh, in, the, in, the, in the egg. <laughs> uh, amen. They will protect that nest. Amen. The dick is laughing. I know what he's thinking about right now. A <laughs> mother uh, will protect. Amen. They're young. And look here. So when Jesus here is derailed and talked about, and he's claiming to be the Son of God. You automatically know here that if you're coming against the Son of God, you're coming against God. To come against Jesus is the same thing as to come against God. Hello, somebody. So after resurrection, Jesus walks around and proves himself to be the genuine real deal. After resurrection. He walks around, amen, get this, with the right spirit, and not even going about as king because it wasn't time to set up his kingdom. But the powerful thing I think that we haven't really looked at too much is that uh, there's no, no revenge, no attack, 
Mm. What I'm telling you this afternoon as we look at this, there's something, again, we're talking about Jesus right now, uh, there's something about him and who he is that he was the justified vessel. Can we go back here? You know, so we going to take my time this afternoon. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was. The Bible says, sin of angels, justified in the spirit. God was preached on in the world. Yes, sir. Wait a minute. God was received up into glory. Wait a minute. I thought God was already in glory. We're talking about Jesus, right? So obviously, when we talk about Jesus, we're talking about God. Amen. For to have Jesus is to have God. Amen. Not to have Jesus and not to know him, amen, is to not to know God. We find here he was full of grace. We find here that this was love manifested or revealed. We find here after resurrection, get this, the patience, the patience of God. Mm. Now it took patience for him to go through. And I believe uh, Bishop Noah Jones, the greatest miracle was the fact that he stayed on the cross, dying, it didn't come down. Because the mockers walked by him as he hung up there, like you would have had a picture. Look at him, what a sad, pitiful sight. He saved others. Can't even save himself now. If that were you and I, and we were full of anointing, we would have jumped down off that cross, but stayed up there. Save others, couldn't save himself. You know what the world says of you? Child of God? When you're going through when you're suffering, you know, the devil makes fun of you and you're suffering and say, Look, where's your God at now? Where's your Savior at now? Where's your deliverer at now? Trouble in your marriage, trouble with your children. Amen. Yeah. Bill yeah. stacked up on the table. Where's your God now? Where's your Savior? Amen. But there was coming a day of reckoning after resurrection. Everybody say that. After, after. Resurrection. resurrection. I wonder where were the haters after the resurrection. Amen. Get here. When Jesus comes up out of the tomb when he walks around. Amen. I believe if there were individuals that were skeptics, amen, uh, and, and I, I don't I find it in scripture here, but they all must have been on the run. Hello. And specifically, the Bible says he appears you know, between uh, to, to hundreds of people after resurrection. But there's something about, amen, a man who was crucified on a cross and is now walking up out of the tomb three days later. There's something about, and they knew who he was. This was not a figment of their imagination. This was the Savior that was crucified, and now, now he's walking around. I hope you're getting this in your spirit. When light shines in the darkness, the darkness cannot crap. Uh, praise you. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Cannot comprehend it. I had two words going through my mind. Apprehend and grasp is why they came out wrong. Apprehend or grasp. Darkness cannot apprehend light because light came up out of the tomb. Darkness had to get away. See, darkness has to do with ignorance. It's ignorant for people to say that never happened. The devil wants to keep people ignorant. And that's why the spirit of the Antichrist you know, says here that God didn't come in the flesh. And if he didn't come in the flesh, then he can't be received up in the flesh. Amen. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist. But God came in the flesh. There's a real body you could touch. It was a man crucified. And it was the Son of God, the Son of Man, that was resurrected. You talk about a superman. You talk about a hero. Amen, somebody. 
Superman, Batman, Thor, ain't nobody, amen, amen, ain't nobody got nothing on Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, have mercy. And then we find here, love is manifested. The patience of God is revealed because the right spirit of personality he has. He's kind after resurrection. He's genuine. He's full of graciousness. And we find here, and I wrote this down, the Holy Ghost enforces, amen, the very will of God. Holy Ghost enforcer, amen? God shows up. And I wrote another word here, uh, Sister Kirkland's a nurse, uh, post op. After. Post, you see, there's an operation of God, right? Let me tell you something here. Thank you, Jesus. It was the operation of God that was working, even though Jesus' body had no vital, God was still working. We don't understand it, amen. But the Bible says he went to hell and he preached to the demons in hell. Perhaps there were some cigarette demons and some alcohol demons. Amen. Some fornicating demons and adultery demons. Amen. But every demon that needed a message from God, they got it from Jesus. I said every demon that needed a message from God. Jesus had to go down in hell and snatch and take the keys back from the devil. said, I am the resurrection. And I am the third power of God's creation. But he said, no, I'm going to go to your place, which is actually God's place. And I'm going to go down to hell where you think you're in control. Talked about Jezebel's spirit, amen? Let me tell you something. After resurrection looks different than pre-resurrection. Going into it, he looked like, get this, he was losing. But all three days later, hmm. The Holy Ghost enforcer comes up and praise God. The Bible says the spirit that is in Christ, get this scene where you and I come in. If the spirit that is in Christ be also in you, Romans 8 and 11, you that raise up Christ in the bed shall also quicken, make alive, your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwells there. Look at the preposition, in you. Romans 8 and 11. You got to have the Holy Ghost down on the inside if you expect to get up in that great in the morning. Amen? It's not good enough for you to have a touch of the Holy Ghost or to feel God's spirit when you come in the house of God. You got to be a vessel and have the Holy Ghost living water down on the inside. You cannot be an empty vessel walking around from walking around in here. Everybody say after resurrection. So what does it mean, amen, to have a new life? Let me ask you, what does a new life look like? Many people say, I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ in my life. Amen. Jesus said, you're living by the what? Talk to me, you're living by the fruit they bear. See, nobody wants, see, nobody wants to uh, look at their fruit. But Jesus said, wait a minute, because people say, hey, don't go judging me, don't go judging me. Well, you're already judged by the word of God. Amen. And you don't know what's in my heart. Look, like before you knew it's in, in your heart, you'd be ashamed. But like I told the Sunday school class this morning, we do know what's in your heart because your actions, your actions, your actions depict what's in your heart. You do what's in your heart. I'm living for God now and I'm preaching right now because it's in my heart. Amen. To live for Him. Praise God, somebody. But I want to ask a question here. Uh, what does your new life in Jesus look like? Not only does it, what does it look like, what does your new life in Christ Jesus sound like? Well, I'll tell you what it doesn't sound like. I don't think I'm going to make it through this test. It's too hard. You mean I got to go without this and go without that? That's not a new life. That's not the sound of a new life. I don't think I can make it without this. That's not a new life. That's a defeated talk. Amen? And sometimes the enemy wants to brainwash us and make us feel like, and see, that's the, that's the first problem here. We put I in front of God. We're so presumptuous. We got to think that we got to do it. And God said, without me, you can do nothing. I said, without me, God says, you can do nothing. You can't buy your salvation. 
You can walk around and rub elbows, amen, with important people. Salvation only comes from Jesus. And thank God the Holy Ghost only comes from Jesus. He's the only giver of the Holy Ghost. He said, if any man thirsty, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, get this out of, amen, as the scripture says, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Sadly, many Christians today don't believe on God the way the Bible says. Therefore, they don't get the results of God in the living and dry desert areas. I'm a believer, but I'm still dry. I'm a believer, but I have no real. I'm a believer, but I have no drive. Well, let's go back here to what Paul said. Paul said here, I want to know who he is. In Philippians chapter 3, he said, I want to know him. Many people go to church for all the wrong reasons. Well, you know, doctors and lawyers go to this church, so this must be an important church. You care about no doctors and lawyers. Is Jesus in your church? Is there deliverance in your church? We can start. Who cares? Well, they got a lot of money. They roll up in Bentleys and Mercedes. Who is Jesus in your church? Is Jesus congregating and tabernacling with you? Do you have anointing? Get this, and we say our church is if we want it. Amen. To my pastor, my fellow neighbors in the gospel, we don't own any church. Hello, somebody. The church belongs to Jesus, not the pastor. Amen. Ministries belong to God if they're God ordained. Hello, somebody. I said if they're God ordained. Praise the Lord. And therefore, when you look here at what Paul said back in Philippians chapter 3, he said, I just want to know him. When I come to church, give me a word that I can know who Jesus is. Don't give me philosophy. Don't give me good, nice ice cream stories. Tell me who he is. Tell me who Jesus is. Tell me what he went through. And tell me how I can look up with him and go through the same things that he went through. I want to know him. Paul said in Philippians 3 and 10, I want to know him. I want to know the power of his resurrection. Get this. He didn't stop there. I want to know the fellowship of his sufferings. There's an S on there. Suffer more than once. I want to know the fellowship of his sufferings. And why did Paul say that? Because get this. When you're going through an abusive situation with Jesus, they know the trouble I feel. Maybe they don't, but Jesus knows. Nobody knows my sorrows. That's what Elijah felt. Who was after him in class? Oh, Jezebel. He killed the prophets. What do you mean, Elijah? You called down fire out of heaven. He said, Let the truth God answer by fire. How can you know him in one instance, and then you get over here, and you start to hear a bad report, and now all of a sudden, you don't know who he is? How'd you lose Jesus so quickly? Hello, somebody. How have you fallen away into false doctrine so quickly? Who has beguiled you or tricked you so quickly to make you feel like the word of God is non of a non effect to you? This is why you can't be too excited about people who like popcorn, they 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 they, they come into the kingdom, next thing you know they're gone. Boy, they got saved with joy. They got saved with such a morning. You see, when they got the Holy Ghost, they fell out. And they spoke in tongues the whole hour. And then you didn't see them next week. What happened? Some spirit got a hold of them. Maybe they went back to their family and said, oh, man, you going down to let a whole woman's church? I know you brainwashed now. Wait a minute, when I was out chasing women, I wasn't brainwashed. When I was out chasing men, I wasn't brainwashed. And your money, when you was drinking your uh, money up and snorting your money up, amen, and giving your money to uh, fast. That's <laughs> a Bishop Miller Jones, I didn't think of that. <laughs> Throwing your money away and gambling, uh-huh. making this lot of richer. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. They didn't say you were brainwashed then, but now all of a sudden, since you got some Holy Ghost common sense, and now that you came over here into holiness, now you're a crazy old man, a crazy old woman. The devil is a liar. I said the devil is a liar. I ain't crazy. I got a sound mind. And I say it like this, and I'm on TV right now. Everybody who don't know Jesus or don't want to know him, you're crazy. 
if you don't want to know the man Jesus, you are out of your mind. Well, I heard they nothing to him. You are out of your mind. I'm telling you, you need to know who he is. Oh, I can't get a witness up in here. You are out of your mind when you don't know who Jesus is. When you don't know who Jesus is, you don't know who God is. A lot of people talk a lot of smack. Can I use that word smack? I just did. A lot of people talk a lot of smack about knowing God and haven't been through anything. Never been lied on, never been talked about. Amen. And some people on the outside of the church look at me and knowing I don't want to pick up my cross and follow Lord, I want to suffer and go through. But when you love him, you realize that you're cross and I'm going to have fellowship with suffering. When I'm going through, I'm not going through by myself because Jesus is right there with me. It's okay. Let them make fun of your chaste life. That's okay. Amen? After resurrection, let me tell you something, believer. You got something to prove after resurrection. Let's give God some praise in here. So if any man be in Christ, amen, he is a new creation. If any man be in Christ, all things, say with me, all things are become new. What's new with you? Look at, your, look at your brother and sister next to you. Look at him in the eye and say, what's new with you? Well, I got a new tie. That's fine. And I got some nice some shiny shoes. I call them on sale. Pay less. Pay less, get more. I ain't talking about your clothes, child of God. I ain't talking about your new hairdo. And I want you to look nice. When I say what's new with you, I'm talking about what's new in Christ Jesus. What new revelation do you have? Amen? Get this, what new praise do you have? I'm tired of hearing that tired old praise, God save me from drinking, smoking, and running around. What has he done for you lately? Hello, somebody. What has he done for you lately? This week. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Because if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. This means here God is always doing you in the life of the believer. I tell me you didn't stop creating in Genesis. Pentecost here is an experience in God. And I just have to believe here that after your resurrection, I just have to believe that there's probably things taking place new in your life that you haven't come into existence yet. Amen. There's some new things happening in your life, but uh, the problem is here, not with God, the problem is that you have an old mindset. See, the reason why you don't want to come to Sunday school anymore is because you're not believing God anymore. The reason you don't want to come to Bible class, amen, is because you think the word of God is not relevant to you. Amen. But I'm going to tell you something here. To people that love God and the people that taste it and know that the Lord is good, they can't wait to get their service because they know that there's always a new word for them. Well, we done went over that lesson before, but now I don't care. There's always something new about God after your resurrection. So the real question is, are you really born again? Because after resurrection, amen, you got a new drive. After resurrection, you got a new determination. See, you get this. Some people will say with their mouth, I'm a believer, but they are still dead in their sins. Their profession doesn't match up with their confession. So they come to church as vessels that are still empty. And they sit under ministries that are not about how God. To check off, amen, the boxes I did here and I did there. And I even gave a lot of money in church, but do you know who he is? Do you know that he's a keeper, amen? Amen. After resurrection, after your resurrection, nobody, nobody's got to tell you that God is a keeper because you know what you went through. The Lord said, I brought you through it. When they were lying on you and saying, you, you brainwashed while going to that church. After God resurrected you, amen, out of that low self-esteem and out of their hatred, out of their envy, out of their jealousy. After God picked you out of the tomb, amen, of being decayed, God said, I'm going to show you some new things about who I am and how great I am in your life. Say with me, it's in my life. It's in me. 
Amen. It's in me. I got the power of resurrection on the inside. Come on, say with me. It's all different now. Ooh, no wonder. Amen. You got a new way of thinking. See, get this. Before you can start acting differently, you got to start thinking differently. Amen? A lot of people have not changed their way of thinking, and therefore their actions are still the same because they're still thinking about being a slave to the can't help it. A slave to sin. Well, I can't help but go by that boy's house. It's just something about me. You need to learn to die out to that boy. You need to learn to die out to that girl. You need to die and learn to die out to alcohol. You need to learn to die out to cocaine. You need to learn to die out to suicide. Come on, somebody. Because God has said, I'm going to show you something after your resurrection. Hard to see God while you're still dead in your sins. Hard to believe God when you're still six feet under. My question to you is, when are you going to get up out of that? When are you going to stop taking a dirt nap? When are you going to start, when, when you start believing like, you look here, I don't have any power and God gave you the Holy Ghost like he gave it to the rest of us on the day of Pentecost. Speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God gave others. What have you done with the Holy Ghost since God gave it to you? Yes. Hello, somebody. Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you are spirit and life. In other words, what have you done with the word that God gave you when he gave you his anointing? After resurrection. After resurrection, I got a new reason to get up in the morning. After resurrection, I got a new purpose in life. After resurrection, I'm no longer thinking selfishly about myself. But after resurrection, after resurrection, rather, I have a mind to think about kingdom building. Amen? Come on, somebody. So in my clothing, you are the world. Let me, let me rephrase that. The world ought to thank God that you're saved. Amen? Amen. Your haters ought to thank God that, amen, that you are where God placed you to be. Amen. Because, amen, the old man would have did some cutting up. Amen. But God said, I got a hold of your emotions. Huh? The old man would have still been packing your peace and carrying your gun. Huh? But after your resurrection, amen, amen, the only peace you got is Acts 2. 38, not a 38. Come on, somebody. After your resurrection, amen. You might worry about your haters and your debaters, because uh, after resurrection, God is giving you true joy, true peace, true power, and true anointing. After your resurrection, God said, I want to prove to the world today. Uh, he said, I'm going away into heaven. Uh, I'm going to prepare a place for you to where I am. Uh, there you may be also, uh, but no, when they lie on me, they're going to lie on you. Huh? I'm going to talk talk about you. Huh? But God said, don't worry, I created you and you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Huh? Now get this, the world didn't recognize who Jesus was huh? and they're not going to recognize who you are. Huh? New man in Christ Jesus. Huh? You got a big family and people have seen the change in your life. Huh? But you're going to find something of you that's not going to believe about the power of God in you. It's in you. Huh? And you know what God has done. Huh? You don't have to answer to nobody else. Amen. When you know what God allowed you to step up out of, you picked yourself, and I'm sorry, the Holy Ghost gave you power for you to step up out of that grave. Amen. I stepped up out of the bar after resurrection. I stepped up out of fornication after your resurrection. I stepped out of being a liar. I'm no longer a liar. I stepped up out of gambling. I no longer throw my money away. There's something about after your resurrection. You don't live the way you used to live. You don't talk the way you used to talk. And when I look at you closely, you don't even look the same. There's something about the way you look even on the outside. Something on the inside. Amen. Working on the outside. Oh, what has changed in my life. If you're happy about your resurrection, give God some praise in here. If you're happy about your resurrection, give God some praise in here. So this means I cannot afford to listen to the world and get my marching orders. I, I got to know I got a higher calling. I, I got a higher purpose. Jesus said, my need is that you will 
of him that sent me. And the Lord will look at you and say, how come you don't run with us? That's because you're no longer of him. No, I ain't going to the club. No, I ain't going down to the legion. No, you won't find me at a bar. Amen. After my resurrection, I'm only drinking the Holy Ghost. After my resurrection, I'm offering up before God prayers. Amen. Let that be the incense going up into the nostrils of God. If I'm going to get high, I'm going to get high in the Holy Ghost. The world don't know the stuff you're using. Amen. When you speak in the Holy Ghost, God said, if you get enough of me, amen, you won't even know who you are. Amen. How come you're back in the neighborhood, but you're not part of the neighborhood? Amen. Back in there and amongst those, but yet you're not doing, amen, what you used to do. A change has taken place. Give God some praise for a real change in here. That's a real change. Shout to God. Those and you did not turn over a new leaf. You did not reform yourself. You've been born again. Let's stand all over the building. After your resurrection. After your resurrection. There's a place God wants to take you. The question is, are you willing to go with him? Well, I know uh, I got some crosses in front of me and I've been avoiding God because I think I just can't make it. God said you can make it without them. Well, if I get saved, I'm going to leave my family behind. The Lord said, if your eye offends, you pluck it out. If your hand offends, you cut it off. Peter said, Lord, we left everything to follow you. He said, no man will love houses and lands and brethren. And all of these things are my sake in the gospel without receiving a hundredfold. Look around, you got a bigger family now. Amen. Amen. Look at your posse that's around you. You got brothers, you got sisters, you got fathers, you got mothers in the house of God. So I'd, I'd have to say, after your resurrection, hey man, you are a real winner. Little the man prophet, if you gain the whole world, and lose his soul.